Hey guys, so today I want to look at the fees in my portfolio because I suddenly realized that I haven't been watching it and some of them have really racked up. So I'm just going to go over how we can see the fees first in the portfolio, where they come from. So here's my portfolio as we normally see it and we can't see any fees there. We can see how much I've invested, my profit and loss and the percentage and the value at the end, right? The value is the net invested plus any profit or minus any loss. And it also includes fees. So how can we see them? Well, again, we got up here. See, units and price have got nothing in those two columns at the moment. So I'm going to change units. So first I click on the one I want to change. It shows me the options I can change it to. And over here we can see fees. Click fees and click apply. Boom. All of a sudden the fees show up. And we can see that, you know, they're small there. $8 for Selesh. Mind you, I haven't been copying him long. Depends how long you've been copying them and how much profit they've made you. But there's Selesh. There's seven sixty dollars for Melvin. Uh, who's almost, I don't know, quite a while that I've been copying him. When did I start copying Melvin? Uh, on the 3rd of March. So, um, yeah, 10 months, and he's only got 760 in fees, but around the same profit, all right? So we can see sort of same profit, same fees, even though he's done that in like sort of two months. Um, Amit, who's on 33, he's got zero fees. Now, why is it that some traders have no fees? It's because of the things they're trading. Different assets, different instruments have fees that come with them under certain conditions, like selling, short selling, or using leverage. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Over here, Swissway Marco, he's made $20.64 with only 90 cents in fees. Autobus here, $9 with only 28 cents in fees. So he's actually doing a bit better proportionally. Fund Manager Zek, 512 loss, but he's got 353 in refunds. All right, so this is the inverse of fees. Sometimes when you hold an asset overnight or over the weekend or whatever, you'll get fees, rollover fees applied. And that's how these have sort of built up from those sorts of trades. But sometimes you'll trade an asset where if you hold it overnight, it just gives you refunds. They actually give you money. It pays you to hold it. And fund manager Zek, clever man that he is, has been trading those sorts of assets and getting refunds. So although we can see he's 512 down, right? Here's the net invested is 381. If you take five off that, it's not going to equal this because you'd have to take five off, then add the refunds back and you get this. You can see this is only about a dollar and a half less, you see, than the amount that I've net invested. So there we are. He's actually got refunds. Good to see that we can see someone in my portfolio who's got them because it's an important thing. Most people haven't got them though. Most people are sort of neg uh, negative on fees. Javier, who I hadn't seen, is minus $50 on fees right? That's minus $50 on fees. So I noticed it last time because net invested 327, but the amount, the value, if I close the copy now, if you close it, I go here, for instance, and I press stop copying. The amount I'll get back at the end when everything's said and done, which will be returned to my available balance, is this, is the value. It's how much I've actually got if I close that copy now. It's $240. So 327 minus 35 is what? Uh, it's about 290 something or something dollars. So where's the rest of it gone? It's the fees. You see, that's what really alerted me that I need to be watching this because I thought, well, hold on a minute, how come that's so different? I thought the fees can't be that high, but they are. If we click into them, so I click into anyone, let's click into Javier, it'll show my, my copy while I'm copying them so far. The fees here, $50.51 in fees. Now, um, maybe that's because I've copied them for a long time. So I've copied them from the 9th of the 8th, which is August, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, 9th of August of 2022. So it's over like a year, year and a half, is that? Around year and a half. Um, so in a year and a half, he's made me that many fees. But how long have I been co copying him? 31st of August of the same year. So about 20 days later, I started copying analysis cyclico, and you can see the difference in the fees. So Javier is just racking up more fees than, than other traders. Okay, so why are some of these guys making bigger fees? What are these fees? Where are these coming from? Are these the ones every time we open a trade? No, they're not. These are very specific types of fees. All right, so whenever we open a trade on eToro, we get spread fees, okay? It's a little amount that eToro takes. Every time we open the trade, it's automatically our trade starts slightly in the red, and we have to make back that little bit of red to be in profit. That's not what these fees are. These are called overnight or rollover fees. They come, if we open a position today, right, in the morning I open a trade in Tesla, and by the end of today's trading, I've closed that position, there's not gonna be any overnight or weekend fees on that, right, because it's only in the day. I've held that open for the day. Um, 
If I hold that position overnight, so I, I buy it today when the market's open and then the market closes and I've still got it in my portfolio and the next day I, I sell that, I'll have one overnight fee, okay? And then there's weekend fees, which are like three overnight fees because you've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, okay? That's what these fees are. These are for holding certain types of assets using leverage or sales or certain assets overnight, okay? That's what these fees are. Now, do all different assets create these fees? No. This is where it can get a little bit complicated. A good place to go, if you really want to look into this, is to help and resources page, and we can go down to fees on eToro, and they've got a whole fees page. Now, uh, stocks and ETFs, right? So stocks, companies like Tesla, or Amazon, any of these big names, the stocks that we want to buy. If we buy one of those stocks and we don't use any leverage, remember leverage, I've made a whole video about that, it's like an amplification effect that you know can get us into trouble if we're new and we don't know how to use it. So if we're not using leverage, we won't get no rollover fees. That's these ones here. Once we start using leverage on them, we will have overnight fees. And I'll show you that in just a second. ETF, same thing, exchange traded funds. Not using leverage, there's no rollover fees, okay, on ETF. So they've sort of excluded them from any rollover fees. So let's have a look at that in action. We'll go to Tesla. We'll go there as if we're gonna trade it. And now if we press the trade button, we're gonna open a trade in Tesla, this comes up. Now, we've got buy or sell, right? So buy means we wanna buy low, sell high. We wanna make money off this asset as it goes up in value. Short here, which we also call selling, but shorting is where we wanna make money off the asset as the price of that asset falls. It's possible to do. I made a video about how we can do that. So let's say we're buying this asset and we're gonna buy $100 worth of this asset. Right, the leverage is, is at times one. Open trade, we don't see anything below this. You have gotta watch below it. Watch when we do times two leverage. Instantly, look, overnight fee, 0.07 cents daily and the weekend 0.20 cents. They're not gonna be huge fees. If they were too huge, people wouldn't do it. So they're small fees, but over time they can rack up. Now watch what happens to these when I press times five. Boom, you see, because it's calculating it on the units. So the units times 0.44 times two, I've got double units and we've got these fees. Times five, I've got 2.2 units and there we are, 0.17 and 0.50. So with leverage, on times one leverage, there's none of these fees, times two and times five, there are these fees. Now, something I didn't really anticipate, if I press short, down here, we've got daily zero and weekend zero. If I use leverage when shorting, it's showing me, I don't know if this is a mistake or not, someone confirm this in the comments if you could, but I'm pressing times five leverage, times two, and we've got no daily and weekend fees, shorting Tesla, with leverage. I'm not sure why that is. I thought instantly when I did that, I thought there was gonna be, when you use leverage or when you're shorting, there's gonna be fees. That seems to have changed since I last looked. Now over to ETFs, exchange traded funds, Vanguard SP5, SPX 500 ETF. Um, we'll go there. Uh, again, none when we're on times one, times two, we've got them, times five, we've got them. Let's short and shorting the same on ETF. So no, Overnight and weekend fees shorting on ETFs or on normal um, stocks. What's the next one? Cryptos. What do we get with the cryptos? Let's go and have a look. Okay, so here's Ethereum. Let's go to trade. Boom, look at that, 6.43 up. Look at it moving. So here we are, we're on buy at the moment and there's no overnight and weekend fees. Wow, the spread is huge, 54 on the spread. Spread is the difference between the buy price and the, the sell price. So watch, if I press buy, it was 2636. Let's go to short. 2583. So that's the spread, is the difference between those two. It's another way, it's how eToro is making its money. And obviously, with uh, cryptos, the spread is really widened. It's a much bigger spread than with other assets. So uh, if I'm buying, there's absolutely no overnight and weekend fees. There's no chance for me to use leverage. It's always times one. I can't put times two, times five. I think they've done that because otherwise, you know, they're worried we'll lose too much money with cryptos. I think that's why. I'm not sure. We could make money, I don't know, but we could lose statistically. Anyhow, so. There we are, there's none offered, so there we are. Now, if I go to short, will we have it? Boom, instantly. Second I'm shorting, we can see that there are daily and weekend fees. Uh, so there we are, shorting cryptos, there are, there are fees, even if we're not using any leverage. So there we are, that's cryptos. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so the next page is CFDs, and we can see, firstly, spread fees. That's not what we're looking at here. We have to go down a bit to find the overnight fees. There we are with the little moon and the stars. Looks lovely, it's fees. So that, those are the ones we want to look at. So currencies are CFDs, 
uh, commodities, indices, stocks and ETFs. Now, we just saw them without any fees, but there are CFD versions, which is strange. Look, because it says short selling orders and leverage positions on stocks are ex executed as CFDs and therefore incur overnight fees. Okay, now I was starting to get a bit confused by this, but the answer was really simple. It's just below here. eToro splits its stocks into two types. There's the easy to borrow stocks and there's the hard to borrow stocks. Now, easy to borrow stocks, 98% of all stocks listed on eToro are classed as easy to borrow. And if you're actually shorting one of these stocks, there's not going to be any rollover fees, any overnight or weekend fees, none on these. However, if you're trading a hard to borrow stock, and here it says currently this applies to less than 2% of eToro's available stock symbols, then you will be charged overnight fees, rollover fees, weekend fees, if you do trade and short this asset. So there we are, two types. So just check when you are shorting a stock on eToro, check whether it is one of the 2% of ones which does have rollover fees if you're shorting it. Now with these other three here, the currencies, commodities, and indices, we can see that if we look at currency, sell short or buy long, it doesn't matter. Either way, we've got a rollover fee listed. It's the same for all three of these, currencies, commodities, and indices, whether we're using leverage or not, whether we're buying or selling, there's always gonna be rollover fees fees on these three types of assets. Now this can lead to some interesting situations. Let's say we go to trade gold, right? We want to trade gold and we want to trade it as a commodity. So this is the actual commodity page. No matter what we do, there's going to be the daily and weekend fees. There's going to be these overnight fees, whether we're using leverage or not using leverage. You know, when we're buying or we're shorting it, there's still going to be these fees. So there we are. That's we trade gold as a commodity. But what if we trade gold as an ETF? So here we are. Here's a gold ETF. Let's try trading this. All of a sudden, boom, there's no daily and weekend fees if we don't use leverage. If we start using leverage, there it is, even on the ETF. But remember, there it is, no leverage, no overnight weekend fees. And if we're shorting it, boom, even if we're shorting it with uh, the leverage, then there's no fees there. So we might want to be careful which ones we trade. Do we want to trade an ETF of gold or do we want to trade the actual gold itself, the commodity? Because obviously the different classes of assets, some have fees and some don't. Now there's obviously a difference between gold and its ETF, but that's something we can start to look into and learn about. So looking at these guys, one way that we might be able to tell if someone we're gonna copy is gonna generate fees for us. Let's go to Selesh and let's look at him. Now he's made us, um, he's cost $8 in fees and I've been copying him for just about three months, two and a half months or something. Let's go to his statistics. Let's try and work this out. Is there any way to tell if they're gonna be making us fees? Because we can't see it here. There's no like fees section. There's a risk section. There's their profit over time. There's how many copies they have. But here we can get an idea. Remember, we now know that indices currencies and commodities will generate fees if we trade those instruments, no matter whether we're using leverage, buying, selling, no leverage, no matter what, these three are gonna create, uh, gonna cause fees for whoever's trading them. Stocks, maybe not. If we're using leverage on stocks, then it will. Same with ETF. So here we are, he's, he's trading things which are causing fees, but he's 90% profitable. Now remember, really with these, any of these trades that he opens, if they win, fine, we get some profit, he's generated fees. If they were to lose, he's generated fees and he's got a loss, right? If there was much lower profitability, say 50% profitability, then half the time he'd be incurring fees and we'd get no profit for it, right? So with 90% profitability, even though there are fees, most likely the profits are gonna outweigh them because the fees are very small for each trade. They're not a huge amount of each trade. It doesn't, eToro don't charge huge overnight fees or no one would do it, you see. So um, we can look at what they're trading here. Are they, are they producing fees? Are they mostly profitable? Because they are, it's probably gonna go quite well. We'll go to the portfolio. We'll go back to Melvin over here. He's made a 760 in fees for around the same amount. He's on around the same percentage in fees versus profit wise. We'll go back to him and we'll see in his statistics that, uh, what's he trading? So ETFs, if he's using leverage on them, we'll have fees. If not, we won't. Uh, indices will have fees. Commodities will have fees. Currencies will have fees. So he is gonna be producing fees but overall 88.85% profitable. Again, for every fee that's produced, mostly we're gonna see some profit and that profit should be higher than the amount that's being generated in fees. So again, we can tell a bit from this how they're gonna do. It's not fail safe, it's not foolproof, but there we are. Uh, going back to the portfolio, let's go to Amit Kupf here, Amit Kupfer. Let's go to his statistics and we'll have a look at what he's trading. Why isn't he making any fees for us? 
So uh, 100% stocks, 100% stocks. He's obviously not using leverage at all so far. With 100% stocks, we can be pretty sure. Now he's only 67.35% profitable, all right? The other ones were much more profitable. He's got zero fees. Let's go back to the portfolio. Zero fees on Amit Kupfer because he's only trading things which produce no fees, stocks. If he was using leverage, we'd start to see those fees. So we can tell that this guy's not using leverage. If I go to the portfolio, let's go to Amit Kupfer. Let's go into his portfolio here and let's see if he's using leverage. Um, there's not gonna be, no, times one, look. No leverage on anything. And we could see that because if he was using leverage, we'd have those fees popping up, you see? So no leverage on anything, 100% stocks uh, for Amit Kup. So with the other ones, Marco Hildebrand is a currency trader, but again, for, for the percentage of profit, the fees are very small. So it depends on the individual trader as well. Kresimir Moric over here, 28 cents in fees for $9 in profit. So he's actually doing better proportionally than uh, Marco. Now he's another 100% um, uh, Forex trader. So Forex always, again, incurs fees, but 78.55% profitable, 100% currencies. Again, he's just managed to do very well. Amazing. Uh, fund manager Zek, obviously there, has managed to find the instruments. He's the only one. Look, they're all at minus. He's at zero. And he's just that. He's not at plus. But if, you're not, if there's no minus, then these are refunds. He's trading things which produce these refunds, which is wonderful. Now, Javier, I have to think about what to do there because that is basically my profit and loss on him is minus $35 in loss and also $50 are lost to me in fees. So actually I'm at minus 85. So 327 minus 85 will bring us to that 240 if I cash out now. That's really up there. And I think actually with Javier, I'm gonna stop the copy because I don't know, I think that's maybe enough there. Uh, that's a lot. I didn't realize those fees. I haven't been watching him. Now, uh, Jose has been trading for the same time. I've been copying him for 20 days longer than Javier and much less fees. That's a sort of a different story. Um, so actually with him, I've got actually 37, minus 37 dollars on, on him. So maybe these two, we'll see. Let me know what you'll do in the comments. But that's a quick look at fees. Now, one of the only other exceptions to this that I've seen in the past, I don't know if they still do it, but eToro used to offer what was called an Islamic account. Um, part of the sort of Islamic law around interest rates and around accruing interest, they're very strict around it. Okay, so if you're Islamic and you're an adherent to the faith, I believe I'm not an expert, so bear with me. Sorry, guys, I don't, this is not, if I don't understand the faith, bear with me, write in the comments if I'm wrong here. But they used to offer an Islamic account to Islamic traders on, on eToro. Those, they didn't incur any fees. They didn't have overnight and weekend fees. I believe they made it back somewhere else, all right? It wasn't completely one-sided, but there were no overnight and weekend fees. So I was copying someone who had an Islamic account. They were holding these currency trades open for ages, and they weren't incurring fees because they had an Islamic account. I, as a copier, was still getting these fees. Now, I don't know if they've changed that. Maybe they've changed these rules. This was like three or four years ago, but that was one situation that I saw that was different. Um, but other than that, this is as far as I understand these overnight and weekend fees. Really useful to sort of keep this column on, to just check your fees, just turn it on. Remember, we can go here and turn on the fees column and just keep an eye on them. Because even though you look, this guy's made no fees. These ones, some of them are trading things which don't incur fees. Some of them do, but it's worth it. You look at the profit they're making and the fees they've generated, and you think, well, that's worth it. So I think it also depends, not just on the instrument, but on the trader themselves. How well are they doing? Are they generating a lot of fees? In that case, best to keep an eye on them. But we can, before we copy someone, maybe get hints, maybe ask other people who are copying them. I don't know how we can do that, but uh, get a hint of, of any new potential traders. Are they gonna incur fees? From now on, when I'm looking at a new trader, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look at that. I'm gonna go to the stats. And I'm gonna pay more attention to this. Are the things that they're mostly trading, are they things which incur fees? And if so, I'm going to look at this profitability percentage and see, you know, are those fees going to be coming with profits or not? That's it. Any other comments, anything I've missed, please put it in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Please like the video because it helps a lot and subscribe if you can. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.